Latin from scratch course, second class, cases and their functions. Again, I'm assuming that you have uh, finished this zero class because in that uh, zero class of the course, we already introduced cases and their functions. So I'm not going to be repeating what I already said. Uh, we are just going deeper in what I said. Okay, so um, here we have uh, quite a lot of uh, introduction. Remember, Latin nouns have gender, masculine, feminine, and neuter, and number, singular and plural, and also another characteristic almost lost uh, in English, which is called case. Okay, so this is the important one. Well, we know that uh, nouns have a number, singular, plural. So, for example, in English, uh, woman, women. Uh, then, gender. English words, uh, English nouns don't actually have gender, but if you know Spanish or German or whatever, you know that, for example, amigo, that's masculine, amiga is feminine. And then we see that Latin also has neuter, okay? But we have to focus in this case thing. And here we have the names of the cases. And you uh, should be, uh, you should remember that we studied six cases, nominative, vocative, accusative, genitive, dative, ablative, and there is a seventh case. So we will introduce this seventh case. You don't have to really worry so much about this uh, seventh case, okay? So what are cases? Cases are each of the forms a noun can have in order to mark a syntactic function. Remember, subject, direct, object, uh, adverbial, complement of the noun, all of that, okay? In Latin, there are six cases, the ones that we already uh, learned, plus a seventh, much more infrequent case, which we will introduce. We will only introduce it here, okay? Because it's not super important. And also, uh, warning, uh, I already uh, said uh, this in the zero of class, but I repeat this because I think it's uh, kind of important. In this course, we'll always use the following order of cases, nominative, vocative, accusative, genitive, dative, and ablative, in this very order. In the English-speaking world, most sources use a different order, so usually something like nominative, genitive, accusative, they skip vocative, uh, then dative, ablative, whatever, I don't know, other, other order, with no advantage and which actually makes studying and learning more difficult. So uh, we are not going to be using this other uh, Anglo order, we are going to be using this order, six cases, nominative, vocative, accusative, genitive, dative, ablative. And we start with nominative. Nominative is the most basic case, it expresses the subject of the sentence we will be writing in the syntactic analysis, we will be writing just S, okay? With copulative verbs, uh, mostly uh, the verb sum, remember that the verb sum is to be, or there is, there are, etc. okay? So with copulative verbs, it is also used for the nominative predicate, subject complement, or what we called, and what we are going to be calling, attribute. Uh, all of this is the same, all of these names are the same, but uh, I prefer attribute just because it's shorter and that's how we call it in Spanish, so that's it, okay? So here we have puer est probus, uh, which translate, uh, translates as the boy is good, okay? So uh, here we have uh, the verb sum, no? Uh, est. Uh, so puer is nominative because it's the subject and probus is the attribute because is the complement with the verb to be, okay? We will uh, elaborate on that uh, a bit later. Then, for example, homo non est deus, a man is not a god. So again, homo is the, um, the nominative uh, because it's subject, and deus is also nominative because it's the attribute uh, because it's with the verb uh, to be. Uh, the verb soon. Okay, so that's nominative, quite simple, it's like no, no problem there. Then vocative, this is a case which, uh, as I said, in many grammar English uh, speaking grammar books, uh, it is not even included, but it is actually a case, so we have to take it into account, okay? Vocative is used for the appellative function 
uh, we will just be um, so for example in the analysis uh, in the analysis the syntactic analysis we will be just saying like voc okay because appellative function is too long uh, and what is this appellative function by the way getting the listener uh, the listeners or second person's attention and uh, always my example is the same we are in some place drinking beer or something and we want to call the attention uh, we want to get the attention from the uh, waiter so we say hey waiter whatever and that's uh, hey waiter waiter if we say waiter uh, then that's vocative okay it must be written between commas, so we see here, both in Latin and English. So, for example, manete pueri ic. It's like stay children here. Of course, this in English is kind of artificial, but it's just like an example. Now, the accusative case, which is super important, probably uh, probably the most common uh, case. The accusative without preposition, because the accusative is a case which can have a preposition or no preposition. So we have to make that uh, distinction. Okay, so first, accusative without preposition usually, like 90% of the times, expresses the direct object complement, the O, direct object, okay? And then sometimes, also without preposition, some kind of adverbial, place or time. Then the accusative can also have prepositions. And in that case, it always expresses some kind of adverbial. The specific kind and meaning of the adverbial depends on the preposition. So, for example, if there is a preposition, which means direction, so that, for example, I go to Spain. So that to Spain would be with a preposition, which means direction and Spain in the accusative. Okay? Uh, so let's see some examples. Here we have where with it canem. And here we have an accusative, and this means the boy sees a dog. Okay, so here we have accusative without preposition, and we know that this verb needs an object. So here we have it, no? Uh, the boy sees a dog. And then, where it ad canem? And now here we have the same canem, accusative, but with a preposition, which means direction, which means the boy goes toward the dog. As I said, depending on the preposition, this adverbial with accusative can be a direction, like here. It can be like the purpose of the action. It will also be the cause, the reason, etc. We will be learning with the practice, etc. We will be learning uh, the prepositions, what they mean, etc. The next case is the genitive case. And if you know some English grammar, which I recommend, uh, you might know at least the name of this uh, Saxon genitive. Saxon genitive. And what is this Saxon genitive? So, for example, if I say Mary's dog, so this is the Saxon genitive. So, this genitive thing is to say this belongs to this. Okay? So, that's pretty much what we have in Latin, okay? So genitive expresses most of the times the complement of a noun. So for example, this is a noun. So this is the complement of this noun. So uh, when it is the complement of a noun, we just say cn, complement noun. Or it can also be the complement of an adjective, uh, which we will just write like this, c-a-d-j. And as we can see in the example, most of the times the meaning has to do with Possession and similar notions. Not doesn't necessarily has to be possession. No. So, for example, if, imagine that is Mary's boyfriend. So, of course, Mary doesn't possess uh, her boyfriend. Okay, but you know, uh, relationship, possession, you know, all of this. So, for example, puer widet canem puellae. So here we have a genitive, and we translate this: the boy sees the girl's dog, or we could also say the dog of the girl, okay? This depends on the situation, on the context, etc. The fifth case is the dative, which expresses the indirect object. Uh, remember that, that accusative is direct. Dative is indirect. 
take into account that in Latin it is never preceded by any preposition because in English it can work in a different way. So, for example, we say puer dat malum puellae. So puellae, as we know, it's a dative, can be dative. So the boy gives an apple to the girl. So here we see that in Latin, in, in English, we have a preposition. In Latin, we never have a preposition. But also, depending on how we say it in English, in English, we might not need the preposition. Also, for example, the boy gives the girl an apple. Of course, these two uh, options are the same. Just one option needs the preposition. The other option doesn't need the preposition. This is, of course, this is not about Latin. This is about English. But in Latin, which is what we are actually studying, uh, dative never has a preposition. Then the last important case is the ablative, which is also quite frequent, okay? Ablative can work both with and without prepositions. It always expresses adverbials of many kinds, okay? So uh, the ablative is the case which is specialized in adverbials. When there is a preposition, that's what uh, lets us know the specific kind of adverbial. If there is no preposition, most of the times we can only know from the general context. So let's see the examples. Puer it ad canem cum patre. The boy goes toward the dog with his father. So here we have cum, this preposition uh, expresses company. So actually company, cum, cum, company. Okay? So uh, this cum we translate with. Uh, with a preposition with, okay? So the boy goes toward the dog with his father. So this is an adverbial, well, this is an adverbial of company. So again, you see com, cum. Then here, Romani pugnant gladiis. Romans fight with swords. And now you might say, oh my God, why do we have with? We have with, but here is with preposition, here no preposition. Why? Because this is not an adverbial of company. This is an adverbial of instruments. Okay? It just happens that in English we use the same preposition for both adverbials, but this is the company and this is the object. This is the tool. This is the instrument. In English, we use the same preposition. In Latin, we see that the company, preposition cum, uh, instrument, no, uh, no preposition at all. Again, we will be learning with the practice, with the sentences, with the texts. We will be learning uh, which prepositions mean each thing, etc. And the last case, uh, which is the locative, and we can guess what this locative is for, okay? Uh, first, it is used by just a few nouns. That's why it is so uh, uncommon to use it or to find it in texts. And that's why we just introduce it here and Later, we will say a bit more about it, and that's it, okay? It expresses the adverbial of place where, that is, the location. That's why locative, location. Also, for example, I am in Rome, I am in Seville, I am in New York. Uh, then this in Seville, in uh, Madrid, in Rome, in New York, whatever, I would use the locative without preposition this is the most uh, shocking uh, feature of this case okay that uh, we would translate it with a preposition of location in at on whatever but in latin in latin is just directly the noun in the locative no preposition so for example manete romae it would be stay in rome okay Okay, so that's it for now. That's uh, all we need to uh, know uh, for a long time about cases under syntactic functions. Uh, of course, what we need to do is first continue learning and second continue practicing.